Hello everybody, Joe Marquez here once again from the Sons of Technology to show you something that I'm really, really excited about. I want to talk to you today about learning artifacts. And you can find all the resources that I'm going to share with you today um, at my website, sonsoftechnology.com, or you can go straight to the learning artifact page by going to bit.ly forward slash learning artifacts, which you can see right here on the screen. So what is a learning artifact? Well, a learning artifact is something that is created by our students during the course of instruction. It's not something that you hand out to the kids, it's something that they create. Now you could give them a template and they can create on top of that, but it's not something that you've created and just hand it off to them. Another aspect of a learning artifact is that it must be lasting, it must be durable, and it must be public. And when I mean public, I don't mean like to the general public, right? We still want to abide by student privacy. But what I mean by public is it must be shared out to the rest of the class so that it can be uh, allowed for students to engage with it, to provide feedback, to see what other students are doing. And so that is a great Thing to be doing in class and learning artifacts should actually be created every single day and one of the ways that I introduce learning artifacts to our students is I, I kind of talk to them about social media I talk to them about you know as you're going through the course of your day outside of school your friends do something funny you want to do something that you remember you take a picture of that and you post that picture on your favorite social media platform and then you write a little blurb that underneath so you can remember why you put that picture down. That's exactly what a learning artifact is. It's something the kids create and then they, they go, ah, you know what, this is amazing. I now understand what my teacher is trying to get me to learn. I understand the essential question of the day now. And they, um, they take a picture of what they were working on and then they write a little blurb about it. And then if they want, they can even add an extra uh, realm of multimedia to it, whether it's audio or video. So I wanna showcase for you a learning artifact template that I think can work really great for you and your students. And I call it the slide snap. Now, a slide snap is a template built in Google Slides that allows students to create a snapshot in learning, something they learned right then, taking a picture of it, describing why it helped them understand or connect them to the content, and then they can describe that with voice or video. So I wanna showcase for you what a slide snap is. Now, once again, all the resources are found here on that learning artifacts page, and all the um, exact templates can be made as a copy for you right here. So let me show you what a completed learning artifact actually looks like. So this would be a learning artifact here that, that is just an example of what would be done. Now, the, uh, the picture can either be something they've done physically um, or it could be done something that they've done digitally. It's completely up to what you are doing in your classroom. I am a huge believer in blended learning, meaning not everything should be done digitally and not everything should be done physically. So if you could blend those two worlds together, that's pretty amazing. And so you would bring that image in that helped you understand the material or something that you're proud of for learning that day. And then you bring an emoji right on top of that that describes how you felt during the course of it. Were you frustrated? Are you happy because you understand it now? So you bring an emoji that pops over. And that actually is helping you, the teacher, because as you're going through uh, looking at these slide snaps, you can look at the emoji to see how the students are feeling. And if you see one where a student is just like really angry, that that's something you maybe want to focus on and then you go talk to that student to see why they are upset about this project. Now, a lot of this is based upon Tara Martin's book snaps. It was a great idea that she had where she was utilizing a Snapchat while she was reading her books and she would take a snap of the book and she would annotate right on top of it to explain her feelings at that exact moment. And I thought, how great would this be to be have this idea brought into the classroom for students who can't really utilize a social media. And so this is a great way to utilize what you're already doing in the classroom. Now, if you are a Microsoft school, you can still do this in Microsoft PowerPoint. So I just do this in Google Slides, but it can be easily transferred over into any Microsoft um, application that you have. Now, another thing that we want to bring in right over here is a text box. The text box is having the kids type what they learned, what they did, what they've gone through. And then right underneath that is going to be a place where they place the video. 
a video of them explaining what they've done. Maybe it's a walkthrough of how they completed it. And if they're scared of putting a video, I'm gonna show you how you can just put an audio there. And if, you know what, if you're just learning how to do this, you can actually remove the video completely and then just take this text box and make it a little bit larger so that your students can have a little bit more to write. So completely up to you what you would like to do. I just like to have the option of both. So that's what a completed learning artifact looks like. And the template that you'll be giving to the students is going to look just like this. So you already have four of the most commonly used emojis, um, happy, sad, angry, confused, that they'll be placing right over their image. At the bottom is where they would be placing their name so that you would understand who it is from when you're really quickly going through them. Um, this is where they're going to place their image. This is actually an image placeholder. So they can actually right click and select replace image with the image that they're going to take. If they want to take a picture of their physical item, they can click on camera, or if they want to upload it from their Google Drive that they saved it, they could, or if they want to upload it from their device. Um, and then over here again, this is where they would place their text, and then this is where they would overlay the image if they wanted to. Once again, if you don't want them to place an image, you can definitely delete that from the template and then just expand the text box to make it a little bit larger. And it's even better when you do it as a whole class. Here's a whole class template. And what you would do is you would be working and you tell the kids, okay, stop. I want you to do a slide snap. Whatever you know right now, whatever you're working on right now, whatever you're feeling right now, I want you to take a snap of that and start talking about it, right? And so it's, it's kind of like a break in the action of the classroom. It's giving the kids time to stop, think, recollect and reflect on their learning for that exact moment. I don't like this to be done as an exit ticket. I like this to be done as a mid class kind of break. And so we just call it, Hey, snap, let's get, let's get, let's get going. And then um, in this template, you have the instructions of all the things the kids would want to do. And then over here, um, are all the different slides that can be done. Now, I put 42 slides already in here. You can delete. If you have less than 42, you can add if you have more than 42. And God bless you if you have more than 42 students in a single class. Um, but this is also great for remote learning right now as well because this can be done in the moment or it can be done during the course of a week and you can look at these on a Friday. This can be done great as a blended learning activity in a face-to-face -face class or this can be done in a, blend, or in a remote or distance learning situation like we are all in right now. So we can definitely do that. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I need to caution you is if you just hand this out to the kids via Google Classroom as all the kids can edit and you don't give them a slide that they'd have to work on, it could get a little bit crazy, right? I normally tell them, hey, go claim your frame. And, um, but a lot of kids would go to the first frame and then you'd have like 10 kids on there. So what I really, really, really recommend is I would tell the students, um, if you have numbered seats in the class, say if you're seat three, you're gonna go to slide three. If you're seat four, you're gonna go to slide number four. And because one and two are done, what I usually say is, okay, um, go to the last two. Um, that's gonna be the two that you're doing. So if you're seat one, you go to 41. If you're seat two, you go to 42. But you know, you can figure it out the way that you wanna do it. I just find that's an easier way if the kids already know which slide they're gonna to go to. And it's really amazing when you get all the kids working in real time, because then you can actually go to view and go to grid view, and you can actually see all the kids working in real time right off of this view and you know exactly who's working on what slide because their name is going to be right there visible right at the bottom. So it's a really neat way to get everything done. So let me show you an example of how this is going to be completed. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of a student template. So I'm just going to go select here and I'm going to say make a copy of this entire slide. I'm going to click OK just so I'm not messing with my master template. Now let's say that you're having your students actually um, interact digitally with your uh, with some digital text. Now um, this is what I call uh, next generation digital note taking or interacting with the web and we have a whole video on how to do this and what all the extensions and how you can leave these sticky notes and how you can highlight the internet and also how you can annotate right on top of everything that you're doing right here with your kids. Um, so if you really want to see how to do all this annotation that I'm gonna, that, that I'm gonna be using, um, go ahead and watch the video that we made on web annotations. Um, 
it's a really great video and it shows you step by step how to do all of this. But let's say that you actually handed this digital article out to your students and you said you wanted them to interact with it. And so they're going through it. And the one thing about having the students interact with text is that you don't know for a fact if they are understanding the text. You can tell them to highlight, you could tell them to make notes, but if, if they're highlighting the wrong thing or if they're just highlighting randomly just to make you happy, you don't know if they're truly understanding the text. So a great thing to do in the middle of a text uh, edit or or in the middle of annotations or in the middle of a reading is say, okay, stop, let's do a snap. And, and what that means is take a picture of what you've already done. Take a picture of your highlights, take a picture of everything. And one of the things I love to use to take a picture of highlights um, or take a picture of the internet or anything that we've done on the web is I like using a tool called Awesome Screenshot. Awesome Screenshot is a tool that allows you to take uh, screenshots and a uh, quick video of anything that you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click right on awesome screenshot and I'm going to select the option that says capture selected area. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to capture this right here just like this because that's my selected area and I'm going to hit capture just like that and it brings me now to my captured page all the kids hit is done and this will actually save right to their Google Drive if it, if you wanted to you can have them connect it right to their cloud storage and it will save it to right to their Google Drive I'm gonna go ahead and save this right to my computer and you really don't have to know where you're saving it to your computer just click Save now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my template that I'm creating my snap on and because this is an image placeholder I, all I have to do is right click and hit replace image from my computer. This is the one we just took and I might hit okay. And it boom, it brings it in. Notice it crops it the way that, that um, it fits into this image. So all the kids would do is hit reset image and it brings it there and then they can adjust that crop just like that for you. And this is meant just so the kids can bring in what they've done. Now they're gonna bring in the emoji that makes them that tells you how they feel and they're gonna say here's this is where the text is they're gonna say mr. Marquez asked us blah 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 this is what I've learned this is what I'm doing what I'm what about right so this is what they would type there and then what they would do is they would bring in a video so there's a couple different ways that they can bring in video to this and I want to I want to show it to you right now so what they could do is they can go back here and they can do a video recording named Screencastify. Now I like Screencastify because number one, it's uh, the, the, the free version allows you to do just so many things. It gives you a limit of five minutes, but you don't want your kids to be talking more than five minutes in this instance. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the microphone is turned on and definitely keep the webcam turned on and just for one particular reason. And you know, the kids can always turn it off and on when they are working. So I'm gonna hit record and it's gonna give me a countdown. Ready, three, two, one. And the reason I like the camera to be on because sometimes the kids like to actually use this as an actual uh, part of the recording. So I can say, okay, so in this highlight that I did right here in pink, blah, 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 blah. And then in this highlight that I did up here in purple, blah, 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 blah. So some kids like to do that. If they don't want to do that, they can just turn off the camera by clicking on that camera right there. Another great thing I like about Screencastify is that you can actually annotate on top your annotations. And so you can say this paragraph was really important because, and then this paragraph was really important because, and these annotations are not being laid on top of your actual annotations. It's just there for the video and when you are done all you do is come back to the top and you select stop recording and that recording will automatically be sent to Screencastify it'll automatically be rendered for you and it will automatically be uploaded to your Google Drive that is a really important aspect of this because the kids don't need to download it they don't need to know where they're putting it it just goes straight there and so once this is done once it's done uploading to their Google Drive right there you don't have to do anything else the student doesn't have to do anything else other than come in here they go insert video from my Google Drive most recent 
and they bring it in, they click on it, and notice it isn't rendered yet, but that's perfectly fine. You click on it, you click select, and now it is in. I'm going to restock it real quick to that size, and if you want, you can now delete that background image, and now you have your video there. And once it is done rendering, you can now like play it. the camera to be on because sometimes the kids like to actually use this. So that's a great way to incorporate pictures with actual work, text, and then audio and video. But if kids don't want to record or they don't want their face to be on the screen or they just want audio to be there, that's a great feature that Screencastify has now uh, because under the free version, you can now export it as an animated GIF, uh, which I know my buddy Jake Miller loves. And then you can also export the audio also. So if you just export the audio, it's going to export the audio as an MP3. And once again, as it exports, it automatically uploads it to your Google Drive. Your kids don't have to know where it's being placed. They don't have to click any buttons to have it uploaded there. It just goes there automatically. And where it says download MP3, that's only if you want to download it to your physical drive. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that alone. And if I didn't, if I wanted to add just video or just audio, I can now go insert audio, most recent, and that audio that I just extracted from the video is gonna be placed right here. And now I hit select, and now it creates a neat little audio button right there and have the kids place wherever and you just hit play. I like the camera to be on because sometimes the kid. So it's the exact same audio that's from the video, but if you don't want the video, just the audio, now you have that component. This is a great way to get kids to really think about what they're doing, to kind of reflect on the moment that they are doing it, and then also to kind of uh, to, to wrangle them in, to make sure everybody's on the same page, and then you can really check for understanding to make sure that you're, you're getting to those kids who are not understanding the material and really getting a chance to talk with them, and those kids that do understand it are gonna make the snap, and you can use those as great examples to other students or other teachers. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking a look at the slide snap template and the idea of learning artifacts. As always, if you wanted to come back to this, you can definitely go to my website, sonsoftechnology.com, or you can go directly to this, uh, this uh, learning artifacts page by going to bit.ly forward slash learning artifacts. Once again, I am Joe Marquez. You can find me on Twitter at Joe Marquez 70. Uh, and uh, if you like what I post or if you just want to connect because, hey, you know what? I want to be your friend. Uh, just please go ahead and follow me and I'll follow you back. And then also, please, please, please know that we also have a YouTube channel because you're watching this right now. And if you love this video and you go back through and you see some other videos you like, please follow us uh, because we absolutely love educators who are uh, utilizing our, our uh, hacks and techniques and we love to hear how you're using them. So thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for being an amazing educator.